Amen. Can we give God a hand clap and praise in the house? Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Yes, yeah, yeah. his name Word. tonight. We give honor to each of you in your respective places. And yes. To um, the prince of the Lord that is here tonight. Yes. We thank God for what he's done yes. in this house. And we thank him for what he's getting ready to do. Yes. Um, yes. We're going to go quickly to the word of God tonight. I believe we got good ground to cover tonight. Um, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter, no, Matthew chapter 18, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Are we there? Matthew 18, verse 21 and 22. Good to be back in the house of the Lord again. Amen. It's been, like it's been a while since we've been here. Yes. I know it's been a week, but it feels like it's been a little bit longer. Matthew 18, verses 21 and 22. Ready, read. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brothers sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times, Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. You may be seated in the house tonight. Tonight we're going to be dealing with a familiar word that either we use often in a positive way or we don't use it at all. Mm -hmm. But we'll uh, be dealing with this particular word on tonight. I do believe that this probably will end up going on another week or so um, just because of how in depth it is. But we'll get as far as we can tonight. Amen. 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 It's good to see again all of you in the house tonight. Um, in this scripture, we are looking at Matthew 20, 18. I don't know why I keep saying 28. I guess it's something over in 28 that I need to go and look at in my spare time. Uh, Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Um, and we're dealing with tonight the topic forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness. 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 What is forgiveness? Okay, let me ask you this way. Okay. By the show of hands, how many people have been forgiven? By the show of hands, how many people have had to forgive someone? Well, not have had to, but have forgiven someone else. Okay, very good. Put your hands down. Now, the question on the floor is, what is forgiveness? <laughs> so, if you've been forgiven or had to, or have forgiven someone, then you should know what forgiveness is. Yes. When you somebody. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. All right. What else? Repent. To release someone. Okay. Forgiveness can be uh, that you know, something wrong with you, something that someone that hurt you. Okay. Forgiveness means you know, canceling out all that. Okay. All right. I saw your, your hand here. Else? Forgiveness is right. Letting go. Repent of your sin. Okay. Letting go. Letting go. All right. Anybody else? Release of anger. Okay. Release it. I would say acknowledging that things are moving forward. Okay. Mm hmm. All right, okay, that's that's good. So forgiveness. Forgiveness, it says, it is a central theme in the Bible and a vital aspect of Christian life. What does that mean? It is a part of the Bible that is in the center. It is a central theme, meaning that it is in the center of the Bible. It's not at the beginning, it's not at the end, it's in the middle, which means that a lot of the things around it revolves around this particular thing. That's why it is very important. Huh. A vital aspect of Christian life. Okay? It is a very vital aspect of Christian life. All right? Um, it is something that Christians must do. Right. Okay? Thank you. 
make y'all feel three eight minutes. <laughs> it is something that Christians must do. Is it hard to do? Yes. yes. Is it always easy to do? No. But does it have to be done? Yes. It does. It, it has to be done. And so with that, we got to understand that it is a very vital, this, the definition says it is a vital, meaning it is a very important part of a Christian life. It's not just a part, but it's a very important part. You can't be a Christian and not operate in forgiveness. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Amen. You cannot, we cannot, I cannot be a Christian and not operate in forgiveness. Mm -hmm. All right? Keep that on, keep that in your mind because we're going to go there a little bit deeper in a minute. Yes, sir. So let's look at this outline. The definition, what does forgiveness mean in the Christian context? Matthew 6, 14 through 15. Somebody get it. It's a couple, there's a couple over book, a uh, couple chapters over um, before what we just read. 6, 14 through 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you also, will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Um. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Right. Right. And if you forgive, you will be forgiven. Right. That's simply what that says. Yeah. You want to be forgiven? What do you have to do? Forgive. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Simple. I told you all a while back before that there will be times. The Bible says that the righteous will scarcely make it in. He also said that. Um, there are small foxes that spoil the vine. There's also a scripture that talks about how many are going to say, Lord, Lord, in that day, but they gonna, he going to say, depart from me, the work of iniquity. No, no, no. Well, how is all of that going to take place? And we got to that point and not even realize we're at the point of being passed away from his presence. It is because of things like this. So what he's saying is, uh, if you don't forgive your brother, God's not going to forgive you when you go to him to ask. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. I don't care what they did. I don't care what you did. Or, yes, God is a forgiving God. But the moment I withhold forgiveness from my neighbor, God says, every time you pray to me after that, it's, I'm not here. That's right. That's right. That's right. Lord, save uh, my spouse. And God was like, nah. Did somebody say something? <laughs> I, I didn't hear a thing. Lord, I, I'm sorry, I repeat. So that means that there are some people that have been praying for forgiveness for God, praying for things to turn around for years, and God is saying, I've not heard neither one of those prayers because you got something against your brother or your sister. There you go. My Lord. You know that hurt you was carrying five years ago and that they did and you just won't let it go? God said, yeah, and every time that you prayed to me in the last five years, I've not heard you. So you get the judgment day talking about, Lord, I did all, I laid hands in your names. I healed in your name. I, I cast out devils. He was like, yep, but you ain't mine. Because five years ago you did something and they, they came to you and you still hold on to it. That's deep, ain't it? Yeah. And God is like, if you can't do it, I'm not going to do it. Not that he can't do it, but he's saying, I'm, you got to do it in order for me to do it. Right. I tell you all the time, there's a part in anything dealing with God, regardless of how quote unquote free it is, there's a part that we have to play in. Yeah. You want to be holy? All right. He said, do what? Sanctify yourself. Meaning that in order for you to be holy, there's a part you got to do. Right. All right. I'll clean you up, but after I clean you up, it's your job to stay clean. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. Okay, with that being said, it's just as important for us to know that we've done something wrong to a sister or a brother and not go to them and ask forgiveness. Give them opportunity to forgive. So if I don't go to my brother and allow them that opportunity, am I actually preventing them from having an opportunity to stand clear with God? 
So let me let me get clarity and then I'm gonna answer. So you're saying that if you know they if you know Mother K Paul offended you and you don't go to her and say, Hey mother, you know you hurt my feelings or you offended me, will that will you be the hold up of her being released by God? Um yes and no. Yes, um you won't necessarily hinder her if she don't know it. But the other flip side of that is, if she got the Holy Ghost, he reveals all truth. Right. So it won't be on you, but it, it'll eventually fall on her because the Lord will speak to her and say, you know what? Something is different about Brother Boris. You need to go to him. He holding something against you. You know, you, did you see how he avoided you in the store that day? Go, go, see what's going on with it. I ain't going to him. I know I ain't did nothing to him. Uh, that's how like us don't. Yeah. I know I ain't did nothing. Yeah. And if it is, then that's something that they need to deal with themselves. Because yeah. I didn't do nothing. So that Holy Ghost reveals us in all truth. Now, it won't, you not going to her, letting her know, won't hold her up. But if she has a spirit of truth, and this is for all of us, if we have the spirit of truth in us, he reveals to us the truth. With the spirit of truth being in her, that should also be in me. It should. So I should have no hesitation going to my sister, mm -hmm. allowing her to know what the problem is. That's correct. So we can both be released. That's correct. Because a lot of times we won't go because we'll say, well, they should know they hurt my feelings. Well, I didn't say it with an intent to hurt your feelings. Right. And you acted stronger than you are because you, and you act like, I'm fine. You ain't bothering me. Knowing that it bothered us. Right. So when it was asked, you know, did, did what I say hurt? No, you ain't hurt me. So when I ask you and you say no, I, I clear my part. Have you ever been in, in places or with people that are uh, friends or family or relationships or whatever, and you knew something was wrong and you would ask them, is everything all right? Yeah, everything fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> It is. Right. And that's why the scripture tells us that pride comes before what? Oh, wow. Destruction. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning that when you can't see past yourself, I ain't letting her know she hurt my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> she ain't got that much power, but she she do because you hold it. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't letting them know that that bothered me, but you still talking about it six months later. Yeah. <laughs> you may not let her know, but we know yeah. it's pride that won't say, you know what? That really hurt my feelings. I'm human and that bothered me too. Let me go let her know that bothered me. So that she can then say, hey, you know, forgive me. I didn't mean no harm by that. And then, I'm coming to you. And then, uh, when, when they say that, and, then, and if, even if they say, you know what? Nah. Hey, girl, I owe you no apology. I ain't, I ain't. Then that's your part. You've done your part. As Brother Frank said, it's an individual thing. You can't make somebody forgive you, but it is your job to ask for forgiveness if you even think that you offended them. Right. Yes, ma'am. I'm coming back to that. Yes, ma'am. Let me ask you something. Okay. Okay, we hear that, that, that saying, I forgive you, but I don't forget what you say. You know, you don't want to go back mm -hmm. to that situation again. Mm -hmm. Then is that still forgiveness? Good question. So... This is what it means when the scripture, well, when it talks about forgiving, because the Bible says when he forgives us, he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness to remember it no more, which is in part true, not saying that the word is a lie, because that part is true, but the interpretation of that part is he going to remember it again when we get to judgment, because he's going to open the book, and it's going to be read, everything we've done. But what he's saying is, as long as you're living, I'm not going to treat you like what you did. Meaning, I'm going to forget it. And that's what the thing is with pe uh, uh, people a lot of times is they forgive, but they say, I'm not going to forget, which they simply is telling you, I'm really not forgiving you. Because, no, I'm not going to forget where that scar came from, but when I look at that scar, it's not going to make me mad all over again. Right. Yeah. So that's what it means to forgive and forget, meaning I'm, I, I'm not going to forget, but when I think about it or remember it, it's not going to have any emotion or effect to make me treat you a certain way. <laughs> Makes sense. Y'all got that? And that's what we gotta. That's what we gotta understand. Because a lot of times we say, "Well, I, I, I'm gonna forgive you, but I'm not gonna forget." 
Now, what happens if, if God forgave us, but he didn't forget what we did and how we did it? The next time we start doing stuff that look like, I'm coming, the next time we do stuff that start looking like what we did before, he'd be like, you know what, I'm not giving her that blessing. I'm not going to open that door for her because she getting ready to go down that same road, even though we may not be going, but because it looked like it. But he's saying, whenever you offend me, whenever you bother me, I'm not going to treat you later like you offended me when I truly forgive you. I can see you and not go down aisle three when you coming down aisle two because I remember, I ain't got nothing to say to her. You don't, but you have the love of God. You, you, your mission is to make mature disciples that will add to the number of believers. How are you going to add to the number of believers and you won't even talk to somebody? But you forgave. You ain't got to be best friends, but you got to be cordial. You ain't got to be ace boom coons, but you got to be saintly. Because the Bible tells us over in Solomon that we're supposed to greet our brother with a holy kiss. Which was their way of, of showing love whenever they saw people. But we won't even get close enough to wave at them, let alone a kiss. But we walking in the overflow, baby, you overflowing right to hell. Because you got a moat and a beam and an awk in your heart that you, as Mother Carol said, that you got pride that won't let you move past that. Because, no, nah, I'm too wrong. I know who I, I know I, Say what now? Yes. Okay, question. So what do you do when you let someone know that they hurt you and instead of them taking accountability, taking into account your feelings, they flip the switch and make it like you're just delusional or crazy or you're just thinking too hard about it? Very good question. What do you do when you ask for forgiveness and they don't forgive you and, and they make you feel like you're the bad person? Let it go. And, and that is very hard to do, but it happens all the time. You go to somebody, you know, build up your nerves and your courage, and you say, you know, I'm going to go to this person. I'm going to really be the better person. I'm going to really be the godly person, and I'm just going to let them know that they offended me, and hopefully they'll say, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, but when you go to them, they say, I, I did it because you crazy. I did it because you were the one made me do it. You caused me to do it. If you hadn't have done this, then I wouldn't have done that. Have you ever met people like that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in those times, you have to literally say, you know what? By me being the bigger person, there are going to be times where you may go to somebody and you're not going to get that response that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you have to say, you know what? I'm going to make a conscious decision now to let it go. Yeah. Why? Because my future depends on me. Yes. It depends on me letting go. And even though you flip the script, when I see you the next time, if I truly let it go and forgave you, I'm not even going to hold it against you. Hey, how you doing? Now, I ain't saying that love because the last time I tried to say something, you tried to make me the bad person. Flip the script on me. Mm -hmm. I ain't even going that way. So that means you're going to act your way not to get in the way. Which means now there's behavior that's attached to your unforgiveness. Instead of going down... 84, I'm gonna go 231 so I ain't even gotta pass the job. They won't even see my car thinking I'm riding by to see if they out that way. <laughs> so now you got you losing gas because you're going a whole nother direction uh -huh. to keep from seeing them even outside at their car one day. Yeah. I saw a hand. Was your hand up? Or you were just risking? Um, no, I actually had a question based off of his example, um, which I think he just kind of answered it with her. Heard his a little differently from how it was explained, but the way she just asked her question, you kind of covered it. I thought um, what he was asking was if, um, let's say, I offended Mother Kirkham and she didn't say anything, but after seeing some of her actions, I felt like what I had said or done did, but I didn't go to her and say, hey, uh, I'm sorry for such and such and such and such. He was at, I thought he was asking, am I holding her up from the opportunity of forgiving me? But when she asked that question, you basically just answered it by, you know, if she felt some kind of way, mm -hmm. even if I didn't say anything, it's her decision to go ahead and just forgive and let bygones be bygones, whether I say anything or not. 
-hmm. Yeah, so I answer hers based on her going to the person, and I think I answer his based on somebody offending him and he not telling them they offended him. Uh -huh. Either, either or, because at the end of the day, if she's not aware, or uh, she didn't take it as if I offended her, she might have took it and just went over. Mm -hmm. But me personally, it goes back to that that spiritual conviction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I wronged my sister. I feel as if spiritually, I should go to my sister. I should acknowledge her as my sister and allow her the opportunity mm -hmm. to forgive me for my mm -hmm. actions or whatever. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can offend people and they not even they don't even feel offended. Mm -hmm. But yet I gotta walk around with that conviction. Yeah. So before I'm able to be released from that wrongdoing, I gotta go to my sister and allow her to recognize it as a wrong on my behalf mm -hmm. so that she can forgive me and I can forgive <coughs> myself and move forward. That's right. So it, it's it's kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um just to add to that, I know we're talking about forgiveness, but I guess you can't talk about forgiveness without talking about apologies. And so I, I think you somewhat talked about this before. You, you told us forgiveness is for the other person. Forgiveness is for the person that's, that is either going to them or... Uh, so if mother does me wrong and I go to her and ask or say, hey, mother, I want to let you know you did me wrong. And she said, well, I don't feel like I did you wrong. That was for, is for me. Mm -hmm. And then if I go to her and say, hey, mother, I offended you, will you forgive me? She said, oh, you ain't done nothing to me. And it's like, okay, I may not have to you, but to me, I felt like how I came off was wrong. Then it's, it's for that individual that's. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Am I, that, that makes sense? Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about, I know, like a real life situation, and I need to revisit this conversation with this person, so I'm trying to make sure I have my ducks in a row. <laughs> yeah, because, because that happens. And we have to realize that it is it's for you. Everybody point at yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if they did it to you, right. and they don't ever come to you, but you say, you know what, I'm gonna go to them. Right. Because they stepped on my toe, Right. And I want to let them know they stepped on my toe and that it hurt me or it offended me. Mm -hmm. And even if they say, okay, you know, it's what it is. <laughs> then you have to be like, okay, I came to you, I made you aware, and I did that for me. Mm -hmm. And now, I, as I told uh, Sister Zakia, at that point, or use it as her example, you just got to let it go. Because even when they did you wrong, and you know they did you wrong, and everybody around you know they did you wrong, there may be times where you still, if they're not accepting of it, as she said, then you got to let it go. Because if not, you're going you gonna to stay, they're going to keep you in that place. And sometimes, I'm coming to you, sometimes people will not forgive you so that they can hold you in that same spot. Yeah, that's right. They will hold you. Uh, I ain't forgiving you. You gonna you gonna pay for what you did. You ain't getting that. You ain't getting by that easy. Talking about I'm sorry. It's more than I'm sorry. And you looking like well, what else you plan to get? Because I ain't gonna buy you a house just because I did you wrong. No, I'm honestly sorry. And either you can receive this apology that's sincere, or it, and then sometimes when it ain't for real, well, it ain't for you to be the judge. Because you don't, the Bible says that the contents of a heart, you don't know it. That's right. Only God knows a man's heart. Yeah. So it's not our job to be the judge when people come to us and ask us for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. They just did that just so they could get by. And if they did, it's your responsibility to forgive and let God be God. Mm -hmm. Did I say a lot right there? Mm -hmm. I'm having to get it out while I'm, because I ain't on no go. Go ahead, sir. Then, then come back. Then come back. That's right. Very good. 
Mother, did I see your hand? You did. Okay. But uh, Bishop just walked on in the water. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say that um, the word actually teaches us that if you think that your brother, it didn't say if I think that I have done you wrong, mm -hmm. but it said if you think that your brother have done you wrong, it said you leave your gift at the altar. So I kind of like interpret that as if I'm coming to the altar and I'm giving my tithe and my offering and I know good and well that, you know, I need to go to my brother to see what's going on. I feel like that's three dirty money. Mm -hmm. Because you give it and it. it's right. He's not receiving it. Yeah, so what you, you can give him $500 in offering that day and God ain't receiving it. We just five hundred more dollars in the we got in the bank account. Mm. But how many of us And that's why some of us gonna end up in hell. Yeah. That's right. Because on that day we're gonna say, Lord, Lord, I gave the church in your name. I built the uh, 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 fellowship hall in your name. Cause somebody gonna give us some money to build a fellowship hall one day at our new location. Yeah. Yeah. That was but I built this in your name, and I gave that in your name, and then now you're telling me to depart? And I was like, yeah, but you, you did it out of my will. You remember? I know you did that, but do you remember when you was working at such and such, and this person, da, 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 and this, 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 and you remember that you never got that right? Well, yeah, but I thought when I gave my tithes or when I gave my offering or when I built that fellowship and put your name on it, that that was, no. That's just like me telling y'all, when you give to the poor, that ain't your tithe. That's, right. That's your free will offering. That's right. God's still going to whoop your butt and not rebuke <laughs> the devour off your land because you didn't tithe. You gave to the poor. That's right. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The yeah. poor house ain't the storehouse. That's, That's the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm telling you, the gospel truth. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I, I gave more money to this building fund this week than I normally give, so just deduct that from my time. No. no. He said, bring all the tithes to the storehouse that living me. Then he told him, he said, where well, did you rob me in your tithe and what? Oh, oh, so there's a difference. That's right. So don't take out your tithe to give to the poor and talk about, well, I ain't got to give this because I gave to the poor. God's like, no. Nah. That's the same way with forgiveness. If you don't forgive, I don't care how many good works you've done. Mm -hmm. I took clothes to the Salvation Army and I took this person in my house and I kept them for 50 years when they didn't have no job, no this thing. God was like, that's all good, but you still held on to that that you didn't forgive 30 years ago. Amen. So all that time you took care of the needy, it was not hitting on nothing. Yes, it Because we was all the time saved. Mm -hmm. Did I see a hand? Yeah. See somebody, I see somebody in. So the thing that we got to understand, what is the foundation of forgiveness? It is God's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. The foundation of forgiveness, is this good tonight? Yeah. 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 The foundation of forgiveness is God's forgiveness. Everybody say that. The foundation oh, of forgiveness oh, is God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness. That is the foundation. God's forgiveness is the foundation of forgiveness. What does that mean, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. He said, uh, be kind and come in Ephesians 4 and 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ forgave you. That is the basis of forgiveness. Every time you think you want to hold something, God is saying, remember when I forgave you. Because that's the base. How many deserve God's forgiveness? If you really work for it, you deserve it. Raise your hand. Yeah. So if you don't deserve it, how are you going to determine whether or not somebody else deserves to be forgiven? What determines the what determines it? What scale are you measuring it on? Anybody? So how can you measure whether or not Bobo needs forgiven today? Because the Bible says that if Bobo offend you, you supposed to forgive Bobo 70 times 7 on that thing. Mm. Yeah. Not all together. That's just on that one thing. So if Bobo slap you 140 times, you're supposed to forgive Bobo for that same slap. <laughs> if he curse you out, you're supposed to forgive him for cursing you out for that same thing 140 times. <laughs> 
That's right, because after a while, if you got any good sense, you lose. <laughs> because what I tell you, in forgiving, you got to make a choice. There's a work that you got to do. Now, if you stand here and Bobo slap you and you go back tomorrow and stand in that same spot, time I come on Bobo, you got a problem. And forgiveness yes, is insanity. It's insanity. But after you get slapped and you realize what caused the slap, then you, you adjust. Okay? Bobo got mad. And I know moving forward, if certain things make Bobo mad, don't say those certain things. Wow. I don't care. I'm gonna say it. Well, that's the problem. You're gonna get it too. <laughs> Hello. 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 Is it true? Yes, Thank you. I, I thought it was. But we don't again, pride won't let us admit that we should have said that, or if we should have, we should have found a different way. Yeah. Well, you in my house, you're gonna hear what I got to say. That's fine, you're gonna get here again. <laughs> Or either you're going to do what? Put Bobo out. And that's making a decision and putting an action behind forgiving Bobo that first time. That's the truth. Yes, ma'am. Because, okay, with, with the forgiveness, what, what we fail to realize when we forgive, the Bible says that he said, Busy don't mind. I will repay you. So it's the point of when we forgive, we got to realize God will deal with that person if we just, he said, what, cast your cares upon me? Mm -hmm. Well, he cares for it. Uh-huh. That means he'll deal with that person, but we got to do our part is forgive. Right. And that's the issue. That's the issue. We'll cast it on him, we'll forgive, but then we'll go back around later to try to bring it up again. Mm -hmm. Now, you know I forgave you, but let me just tell you how that made me feel. You ain't got no business telling them how to, you already done dealt with that. So now that goes back to that point we were just talking about when you put yourself back in that position for Bobo to get angry again. Because you got forgiven and got saved. Bobo didn't get delivered. Bobo still got an attitude problem and a temper. And his hand get quick sometimes. And now you want to go talk and reconcile and talk about how it made you feel and he ain't studying that because he ain't got the God on the inside of you in him like you got in you. Am I talking all right? Yeah. yeah. So again, we may not go stand in the same spot, but again, we go put ourselves back in that same position. Well, I just wanted to talk to him. But what? <laughs> you done forgave. Y'all done hashed it out whether he said he was forgiving you or not. Y'all done talked it out, so you ain't got to don't bring it back up. You ain't really let it go. There are people in this room. Don't ask who you are because they ain't going to tell you. They have offended me before. But guess what? What if every time you walk in the door, I treat you a certain way? That's the truth. I ain't preaching today. Brother Frank, I need you to escort them out. <laughs> Y'all going to sing today because I ain't singing. Mm -mm. I just ain't feeling it. Well, who is it to feel? So now you're holding up your gift that God has placed on you because you got all in your heart against, as mother said, you know when you got something yeah, in you. Yeah. You know when you ain't let something go. I had to check myself before I came out here to teach. I can be the first to acknowledge when I have a problem. I had to check myself. Because there were some things that I didn't like. Not that was, you know, but that was something I'm like, okay, now God, of all nights, you want to teach on forgiveness. Okay, that's fine. Am I going to have a conversation? I am. But am I going to hold anything against anybody or any person? No, because I can't fulfill my assignment in God holding on to stuff. That's right. That's right. I got blessings and prayers that I'm, and I ain't doing it just to get prayers answered. But there are prayers. When I go to God and say, God, forgive me, I need him to be able to do that. Because some of y'all deliverance is, is, is going to be based upon me praying for you. And what if he shut me down to where in those times that you can't pray for yourself and you got a pastor that's supposed to be standing in the gap for you and he can't even pray for you because he got something holding him up. What you going to do with that? I'm supposed to be protecting the sheep and, and my, my prayer's being held up. That's some perspective, ain't it? Mm -hmm. 
I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be out here fighting for you, and I can't even get a prayer through because I got unforgiveness with mm-hmm. somebody in my heart. Yeah. Right. How many people are, are are depending on your prayers that are, are are living on your prayers if you can't afford not to forgive? Yeah. Thank you for the five people that got somebody holding on because it, there are some people that are still alive because you prayed for them. Yeah. That ain't. Pride, that ain't uh, self-exhortation. That's just true. There are some people that are still alive in this ministry because their pastor is covering them until they recover. Noah was a drunk over in a tent with his clothes off, but he had people that interceded for him and covered him up until he got himself together. And that's why we're still here because even though he had a mess, there were people covering him until he got together, and now he was able to continue to build the ark and do what he was supposed to do Amen. to get us where we are today. Amen. He wasn't always there. No. And that's the same way God is saying. People that may offend you, they're not always where they're going to be. That's why you can't hold them and say, well, I ain't, I ain't forgiving them. And so what if they offend you a second time? The Bible says forgive them again. It wasn't supposed to go like this. Is it good or Mm -hmm. We try to put a number and it ain't 140. Oh, how many times we forgive? All of us have probably forgiven somebody at least 140 times of stuff. But he's saying the parable he was making was if every time they do the same thing to you, not seven times seven, that's 49. But a hundred, uh, 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 70 times 7, which is 490, actually. I, I, mis, I misnumbered y'all earlier. So 490 times mm-hmm. of that one thing. That's just one thing. So if I talk about you behind your back and you forgive me one time, okay, and I talk about you behind your back again, Bible says you're supposed to forgive me again. If I talk about you, well, you know, I forgave you three times, okay, but who are you to judge? Because the same measure in which you judge, you're going to be judged on that same measure. Yeah. So when you start telling people they're running out of time, God's like, okay, well, guess what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you running out of time. Well, how many times I'm going to forgive you? Mm-hmm. How many times have God forgiven us? <laughs> Multiply your age times 365. <laughs> you ain't got to do it. Because for some people, it's probably one million something. Yeah. I'll do my name. That was shade <laughs> 30 times 365. What is that? 31. I'm not 31. <laughs> Don't try to figure out my age. Multiply your own age. <laughs> That's 11,315 days. So if he said, if this limit was 490, I'd have ran out. Yeah. You don't ran out too. Because I'm. I'm outside of her here right now. I'm probably about the youngest one here. You, you ran out too. You got me about four or five years. No, you got me by eight years. Pushing eight years. Seven, okay. Oh, you the youngest by a couple months. But God is saying, it, regard, irregardless of how many times somebody offend you, he says it's your job to forgive because why? You want to be forgiven. Right. You can't be you can't not do something you won't do. You want to know what parable? You want to know what uh, law that is? Sow and reap. Be not deceived. Oh, y'all know that scripture. Be not deceived. As a man sow it. So if you sow on forgiveness, if you hard on giving it, that's it. So even if you don't go by the 40 times, for the seven times, seven and all that, okay, knock that scripture out. All right, you done ran out of your 490 times. Okay, good. But the scripture still remain. It is a man sow it, that shall he also reap. So if you don't sow forgiveness, you don't reap it. And that's from man and God. Mm-hmm. Yes. So is there a proper way to forgive and or Because sometimes we feel like, say, for if we want to forgive somebody or we've done something to somebody, somebody, it's like the whole explaining aspect. They want to build up a litany of the things that that offended them, and you know, um, but 
should we do that? Because there's sometimes also too, sometimes we can say, oh, I forgive you. But then I think that's what you mentioned earlier where, you know, later on it's like, well, you, you want to bring it back up. But it's so in those times too where we're asking for forgiveness or we're forgetting, should we um, go down the, the list of, of things and then forgive or, or at, you know, or is, it, is there like, I guess what I'm trying to say, is there a proper way to forgive? Good question. There should not be a list. And the reason I say that is because if there's a list, that means there's some times that you haven't forgave. Well, I'm, you, you stepped on my toe, you slapped me in my back, you talked about me uh, at your job. That's three things already out of the name, which means that there were three different occurrences that you didn't forget that. Are y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that we should not even let the sun go down upon our wrath, meaning that if there's an instance that we know, we should not even go to bed. Some of us might need to make some phone calls tonight. Stop by some people's houses tonight. Knock on their doors tonight, because they ain't going to respond to your message because they blocked you. But you got to pass by their house to get home. I know it's late, but my life, my soul depends on this. And I just had to stop by. You can you can fuss me out if you need to. I'll take it. But I just needed to stop by and knock on your door and say, I'm sorry for how I did you. Well, you didn't do me no, I understand, that's fine. But let me just, I need to get it right before I lay down and go to sleep. Because the way people going out of here, I may not get back up. And I can't afford to go to hell because I was scared to stop by your house. I know you got me blocked, but I'll find somebody. Hey, can I use your phone to call somebody real quick? Because I know they blocked my number. <laughs> oh, there's a way. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Did you see that? Block a number. See that? Yeah. yeah. It's funny how we on that subject because God, who deals with us in ways, and it was like, Lord, if I got the people unblocked, you got to unblock that number because, see, you could, I could, that person might need you to pray for them. I see. I tell people all the time, blocking is a form of dismissing, which means you really ain't healed. Then you can uh -huh. say that again. Right. If I gotta block you, that means I'm trying to erase you. Right. <laughs> which means that I can't see you, I can't see your number, I can't see your pictures, I can't see your I, That means that there's a problem there. Yes, sir. Feel like preaching, ain't preaching. Yes, sir. <laughs> if I gotta block you, that means I'm trying to erase you. And who are you to erase something that you didn't create? If I can't see your stuff, that means I'm not healed. If I can't stand to walk past you, that means I'm not delivered from you. I still got an all against you. Uh -huh. And if I walk by you and don't see, come on. It's something in my heart. Yes. Hate, anger, bitterness, sickness. What the Bible says? He said he told him. He said the uh, Lord the head will all. He said and confess your faults one to another and be healed. Yeah. What the scripture said? He said there's some stuff that you carry in. You ain't sick because there's a flu out there. You sick because you ain't forgave. Yeah. And now it's getting it to you, and you yeah. think you have a heart problem. You ain't got heart problems. You got forgiveness uh -huh. issues. That's it. I feel God come in the room right yeah. here. Yeah. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm, I'm being for real. Yeah, you're right. right. He said, he, he, Ephesians, I think it is. But he, he, he talked about confessing our faults one to another, and he said, and go, and your sins be forgiven, and then you be healed. However, that scripture went. But he was basically saying that there's some stuff that ain't natural, it's spiritual. That's right. And when I forgive, that's the spirit. I open the door to a spirit. And guess what? When I open the door, uh, Bishop, what are you going to do? You come in. The basis of it is God's forgiveness. I don't even know where I am on this. <laughs> I like You're that, right. um, Pastor, what you said about um, not forgiving. And then we pray and we ask God, you know, to do this or to do that. And then we ask ourselves, 
He said, well, I don't know what's taking him so long to answer that prayer. Oops. I don't know what's going on. I've been praying that prayer for the longest. It ain't nothing happened. Well, it's like he said, you need to do a self-examination and look in the mirror and ask God to reveal to us and to show us what it is that we need to be uh, delivered from. Mm -hmm. And when he show us what it is, then we have to accept that and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. David said it best. He said, in my, uh, he said, uh, I'm going through the scripture to get to the one I'm trying to, Thou desire to know truth in my inward parts. And he said, in those hidden parts, help me to know wisdom. When you reveal to me the truth about myself, don't just leave me there, but tell, show me what to do with it. Yeah. And that's what she said when you say, God reveal to me what it is. And he said, okay, this right here, go deal with it with this person over here. All right, now, Lord, now I got to go over there to him, and you already know what stance we stand on. How do I need to go? Do I need to go in the morning? Do I need to go in the evening? Yeah. Do I need to go before work? Do I, I know if their work is stressful, do I need to go after work? Because if they stress with it, they probably you gotta ask God, God, give me wisdom on how to do what it is that I gotta do. Because yeah. you gotta do it. Yeah. You gotta do it. Re forgiveness and reconciliation. Romans 12 and 18. What does it say? Yeah. Romans 12 and 18 says what? New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Romans. If it be possible. If it be possible. As much as life to you. As much as within you. Live peacefully. Live peaceably. With what? All men. All men. Keep going. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. Uh huh. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will take you, And it's interesting that you read it and you were just the one talking about it. But this scripture talks about, he says, if it is possible, as far as it is within you, live peaceably with all men. And then we went all the time and say, holiness without which. Say it, y'all. No man shall see God. Your forgiveness is a part of your holiness. Because it's the name, what is holiness? Is it the nature of God? It ain't a denomination. It's the nature of God. Now, there are some denominations that don't emphasize holiness. Hence, we get the holiness denomination. But holiness is the nature of God. What is God's nature like? That was a doctor uh, inserted, y'all didn't know. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> but holiness, it is the nature of God. How is God? What is God like? That's what holiness is. Mm. What did he say? Be ye holy? Yeah. I am, I am holy. And if you read it in backwards, holy am I? Mm -hmm. Holy, holy. Yeah. So forward and backwards, you got to be what? Holy. holy. And guess what? Forgiveness is a part of your holiness. Mm -hmm. If you can't forgive, you are not holy. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go to a holiness church until Jesus come back. And you're still going <laughs> to hell right out of the holiness church. I sure will. Because you got a part of his nature that ain't like you. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that's for you. That's for you. I said, God, what you want me to teach? He said, go back to forgiveness. About three weeks ago, we started on this subject, and then I was like, we're going to stop right here because we'll pick it up later. And then the last week when we came, we dealt with uh, walking in faith, I think it was something of that nature. And God told me to go back to this. Forgiveness and reconciliation. The difference between forgiving someone and being reconciled with them. I can forgive someone and, and, but I got to be reconciled to, a, a, to an extent. Meaning that we may not be best friends, but I can walk by you and speak to you when I see you. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know if you have forgave them because that, that feeling that you would have inside of you, mm -hmm. and you know you haven't forgiven, but you say you have, but when you get to that place where you have earnestly forgave a person, you don't have to forgive no more. You pass that by, you can love on them, mm -hmm. you can hug on them. And mm -hmm. I even thought about the scripture where it says, you will heap coals of fire upon their head, and they'll be wondering what's different 
for thy spirit. And that is when you know that the love of Christ is within mm -hmm. you. And then that, I mean, that can make a change in them. Mm -hmm. But like I go back to the point of, if you got that pride in you, mm -hmm. I ain't scared of that. Because you know, if mm -hmm. you go on, mm -hmm. you're holding like your blessing up. And then they're looking at you and saying, well, she says she got it. That she says she saved. And she full of the Holy Ghost. But God, I don't see it. Because I, even me, when I had got out the church, son, I mean, they say they saved. So God, you know what? I don't want none of they Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's just uh -huh. how I was. Uh -huh. Because, you know, you could see a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's why he tell us to put a difference mm -hmm. between holy and unholy. He tell who to put a difference? So we got this, like you said, this is a straight and narrow walk. And that's how come you say she gonna find it. You will find it. You will find it. And that, and, and as she just said, there is some work that we gotta be done. This she brought in the vengeance part. Where when you do it, that be vengeance. Because it's like you're reaping coals of fire on the head. Tell me somebody burning on the top of their head ain't vengeance. And you didn't even do no work but love them. Yeah. And they're like, wait, I did, I know I did her wrong. You mean tell me she loving me? Yeah. You mean tell me she loving on me and I know for a fact I offended her? Amen. I wouldn't have even been my own friend if I had done myself like that. Yeah. But here she is being nice. So now you're going from being someone to forgive to someone being a witness. Mm -hmm. To say now it's something different about it. What is it that make you love your enemy? Oh, we sing the song, makes me love my enemy, makes me love my friend, he won't leave me, all this. We, we sing a good game <laughs> until it's time to walk it out. Mm -hmm. That's a song too for them that may not be able to relate to the other one. You know, y'all used to dance there. Now walk it out. Mm -hmm. You gotta walk out. You you gotta walk it out. Yeah. Oh, don't act like y'all know. I've seen some of y'all walking before. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. He said you gotta walk out the word of God, and that's forgiving. Yeah. You gotta forgive, and 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 not only forgive, but be reconciled. I have a problem with people like, well, I'm gonna forgive him, but I ain't gonna say nothing else to it. Why? <laughs> that's an action. That's a negative action to a positive thing you just said you did. Positive is forgiving. Mm -hmm. But you put a positive with a negative that said, I'm going to forgive, but I ain't talking to it. So now there's stipulations on your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. There's conditions to your forgiveness. I'll forgive you, but I won't talk to you. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Positive and a negative, isn't it? I was a good math student. Mm -hmm. I didn't like science or history. But I'm a good math student. So you mean to tell me that I'm going to cancel out what could have saved my life because I, 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 I'm a friend, but I ain't talking. I ain't talking to you. Good time. Hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so speaking on, on forgiveness, yes, it's right to forgive, but wouldn't it be wrong if you go and ask someone to forgive you? You're just doing it because it's in the Bible, but you're not Yep. Uh -huh. And that's why the Bible tells us that man don't know the heart, but God does. Uh -huh. I can fool you because I'm doing oh, I'm doing it just so make sure I'm clean. I gotta pray, I gotta get answered. And God's like, yeah, but that prayer ain't gonna get answered because you just I know your heart. Mm -hmm. It ain't to really be reconciled, it's to get your prayer answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man look at the out appearance, but God looks at the heart. And that's why he's saying you gotta make sure that what you do is sincere. Because if it's just to get by, it's just to get God to hear you, it ain't it ain't worth it. He ain't gonna answer. Yeah, I saw you do lip service to her, but your heart is far from that apology you just made. Some of us have forgiven people that didn't mean it. But guess what? It cleared us. Because whether you mean it or not, I ain't gonna hold it against you and say, I'm not gonna forgive you. That's why I said, we can't judge whether or not the person was truthful about it or not because we don't know really. Some people can say, I'm, I'm sorry I offended you. And because of they look, we'll say they were real about that. But it could have been just how they was looking that day. 
So God is saying, that you, I can't make you the judge of that because that can fool you. Because you can't see the contents of a person's heart. Y'all like that? So yeah, some people do do it just to say they did it. Just to say they good with God. And God is like, you really are not good with me. Because I realized that your heart was not in that. It was just to say you did. He don't just start with the people in the chairs, do it. He start with us. Yes, sir. 
So, so I know if he working on me, then baby, you you coming up the real somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> to, to, to um to, 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 uh, go off that right there, but the p point is this: the Bible said, um, those that keep their mind set on Lord, He'll do what? He'll keep us. Keep in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. But the point is, when you want peace, you got to cast that thing. I mean. And you had to go on going to a divorce. Mm -hmm. and, and if I tell you like this, the scab, it do hurt. But then when you get, when you take it to God and let, give it to God and tell him how you, to the point, you got to tell God how you feel. So you got to get, you got to get unto your heart. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, I hate this person. God sees your heart. Mm -hmm. That's the point. He sees your heart. Mm -hmm. And when you start confessing what's in your heart, mm -hmm. then God can heal you. From that situation, mm -hmm. but you got to be honest with yourself about where you at. Mm -hmm. Lord, I hate him. Lord, I'm ready to bust his head to the white man. You got to be real. 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 You got to be You got to be real. You got to be You got to be real. You got to be real. You got to be real. You got to be You got to be real. You got to be real. You got to be You got to be real. 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 How you feel about that? That's right. That's right. That's right. So you know what I'm saying? Yep. In order for you to get healed, you got to be honest about where you at. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's a process, but how long you want to be in the process? Mm -hmm. You can't say it. It don't take God long to do nothing, but it takes us long to do something. Mm -hmm. And so if you giving it to God, yeah, that thing might come to your mind again, but you got to say, God, is here again. You got to help me, Lord. I need your mm -hmm. peace. I need your strength. Lord, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling down. I'm feeling like I'm ready to do something. You got to help me, Lord, right here. And see, then that's when the, the strength and the peace of God come in. Because you're honest about that thing. Yeah. So that's, that's the point. See, it, 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 it's going to take us. Yeah, it'll take us a minute. See, how long you want to sit in? Mm -hmm. God will let you sit in. Yeah. But if you want to be free from that thing, you got to be up to God. He'll free you from it. I yeah. promise you that. I promise you I put, like I said, I put that in the books on that one. <laughs> yeah. Have to check on that one. And, and that's that's literally what we have to do. And that's what I, I go back to when Mother was talking earlier, when we were talking about, I mentioned David. And he was like, Lord, you know, here, here he is. But then David didn't stop there. He said, Lord, show me wisdom. Yeah. Here I am, and seeing that my mother conceived me, I'm giving it out to you. You know, I done had this... Uh, man killed because I wanted his wife on the front line of battle. He didn't even have to go, but I sent him just so I could get him off the scene so I could get his wife. I done seen this woman bathing off the rooftop. I done did all these things. And David's like, I realized I ain't getting here by myself. But here after here, I'm, I'm in it. And some of us have to say, Lord, you know, I, I held it against them. I, I caused the trouble. But here am I. Now, Lord, help me to how to do how to deal with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you ask God if he's supposed to be in this thing. Then you got to look at that too. Is it God's <laughs> will? Was it God's will when you walked in that thing? Or was it Joe's will? Yeah. Right. That's yeah. something like something I've been talking about for here later. And, and that's what you have. Lord, what is your will concerning this? Because there are, like you said, there are times where God has a perfect will and then what? Perfect. There it is. Where you get on his nerve long enough, he'll give it to you. I permit it. Because you keep asking for it. And I'm trying to make please. I, I'll let you go on through that. But at the end, it ain't going to go how I plan. You have to come right back around to how I planned it. Reconciliation. <laughs> the power of forgiveness. This is another thing which y'all led me right into this. The next thing is the power of forgiveness. There's freedom through forgiveness. Somebody say freedom. Freedom. Through forgiveness. Through forgiveness. You can't be free if you don't forgive. Because mm -hmm. okay. whom the Son sets free. free In order to be truly free, you have to forgive. And let me tell you this. Uh-oh, I'm going to mess up. I really am. Sometimes you have to forgive God. <laughs> two responses. Three, oh, yeah. four. Sometimes the thing that you're holding against somebody is not your mama or your daddy, but you hold it against God. We, we touched on this in the old church for those that's been around a while, but I'm, I'm, I'm going back through it. Is that there are some times where you hold stuff against God because He didn't do it like you wanted Him to, He didn't fix it like you wanted Him to. 
Yeah, did. He didn't turn it like you asked him to. Yeah. And now we're trying to get you to worship a God that you mad with. That you holding an alt against. You put money in a basket to a God that you ain't even speaking to right now. <laughs> and you thinking it's going to be a blessing come off of that. Okay, how much you was you put in there? You mad with God, you got all against God, he ain't answering you because you got to forgive him just like he's telling you to forgive everybody else. Because if you be honest, there were times that God offended you because he didn't answer you in the way that you wanted him to. When you wanted him to. He, I, I've been asking God my year, and he ain't even there yet. <laughs> Then you start showing up to church late. Well, at least I went. Yeah, but you were late. Amen, you might well have stayed home with that too. You came to church with. Uh -huh. That's the well, truth. at least I was here. We, well, he don't care about you being here. He's everywhere at the same time, so he was at your house. Uh -huh. That's right. And so now you think you're doing God a favor by by just showing up, and God is like, I didn't just need you to show up. I'm everywhere. You you were helping you by coming. And there are sometimes, I see the hand over here, there are sometimes where again, it ain't everybody else you gotta forgive. It's God that you say, God, not only I forgive you, but God forgive me how I felt about you. Right. Forgive me how I treated you. Mm -hmm. We'll say he may not come when you want him. <laughs> may not come when you want him. But he'll be there right on time. But then we'll turn around and say, well, I've been waiting all this time, but he done forgot about me. Well, which one is it? Do you trust him? Do you, do, do you really trust him? Because if he has the master plan, then he knows the way that you take. What Bible says. So now you got to all against God. <laughs> Now we got to preach through your devilment. We got to sing through your rebellion. We got to pray through your strongholds. Uh -huh. We got to rebuke that that <laughs> <laughs> spirit on, that came in you, came in the church with you. Yes, sir. And we, I, I see it when it come in. I say, oh, they don't want to date. <laughs> and you know now I got these windows where you can't see in but I can see out so I'm standing in my office like I see that demon I'm going to have to fight with it now. <laughs> I'm really being serious I see it getting out of the car stand at the window you may park all the way over there Popeyes but I'm, I'm like in the name of Jesus <laughs> say that we bind you tonight uh -huh. lose your hold today the people will praise him this afternoon. <laughs> Comical, but really serious. That's true. Why? Because we're not free. That's why you can't come in and lift your hands because you, you're bound. I ain't bound. Yes, you are. If you're not free, the opposite of free, it ain't no in-between. It's either you free or you bound. Either you forgave or you holding on to unforgiveness. Freedom through forgiveness. We're wrapping up. Forgiveness can free us from so many different things. I heard it said, I saw a hand over here. It's, it's fine, we're good. I was just gonna share, I went through a period where I kind of held a grudge against God. I mean, I lost my younger brother three days after his 33rd birthday in my arms. And he was the good kid. He was the one that done everything right in my eyes. And I, I questioned God mm -hmm. to the point to where well, this should have been me. Why mm -hmm. my brother? Why him? He done this. He done that. And I pretty much just sat down on God mm -hmm. and held him pretty much accountable for this situation. Because you know he could have fixed it and changed it if he wanted to. And mm -hmm. I honestly held a, a personal vendetta against God. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't hurt nobody but myself, but it took, like you said earlier, People praying for me during yes. that time. And I soon came around and yes, I immediately asked for forgiveness. You know, and that's why we have to pray um, the prayer of forgiveness for known sins and unknown. Because mm -hmm. I was so angry to where I didn't realize I was 
you know, sin against, against God. Against God. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was just that caught up That's in my right. feelings right. to where I couldn't recognize my position with God. So, uh, again, you know, I, I can personally say I've been there. Mm -hmm. God. Thank God and thank God for prayer. That's yeah, right. yeah. And, and many of us, if we be honest, when that thing didn't work like we thought it should, mm -hmm. we asked him to, to promote us and we got fired. <laughs> we asked him for a child and then he blessed us with it and we lost it, and miscarried it. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We asked him to fix the marriage and we end up still getting the divorce. And it's like, now God, I know you had enough power to change it. Why didn't you? And so now we, again, we ain't mad with our neighbor next door. Now we may take it out on our neighbor because we ain't got a physical body here for God to beat up. <laughs> right? So since you can't beat God up because he ain't a body, you, you beating the neighbor up. So now you got an offense against God and your neighbor because you keep beating them, cussing them out and get mad at them, talking bad to them. Because they just asked you, how was your morning? Well, what is a morning? <laughs> well, why are you so happy? <laughs> are y'all getting what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. So now we're causing an, another offense mm -hmm. that's holding us up, that's binding us even more. Because we ain't mad at the next person, we're mad at God. And that's why I tell us, we can't hold it against other people when they offend us or when, when that happens because it may not even be you they upset with. Because there have been times that you took it out on the next person and you weren't, they didn't even done nothing to you. They just got there. Mm -hmm. Oh, what I do to you? <laughs> you ain't done nothing to me. Stop asking. Okay, well, your behavior is saying I did. I'm talking right, ain't I? Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell what I'm in the room. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, You're right. And uh, uh, you get angry with him and bitter with him because he is the author and he's the teacher. And you know, at that point, when I was going through, I didn't understand. You know, when I had so many siblings in my family, and I even went to him and I asked him, God, why is it just me going through what I'm going through? You taking stuff from me whenever you know, I got, it's more than me in the family. And I was like the gentleman back here. Yeah, I was, I mean, I was mad, I was angry, I was bitter with him. And, but yet and still, I'd throw my hands up and I'd praise him, but I was mad with him, I was angry with him. And then it, to see young women, you know, when they get uh, with child and stuff, to see that, I couldn't deal with that, I couldn't. Deal, you know, deal with it. it. It made me feel some type of way because I wanted to, that same feeling. I wanted to go through that also and stuff. But it got to the point it was life or death, and I had to choose life. And but I still was mad with him, just like you talked with me that time. And I told you how long it took. Yeah, it was just that long. It was over. It was over 20 years that I carried that anger with him and 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 you know just just was angry with him. I just I just was angry with him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, you you the healer. You could have stopped this. You could have done that. You could have done this, but you didn't. So why you choose me out of everybody else, you know, can have children and all and you chose me. Mm -hmm. He would come to me one day and say, why not you? Look what, what look what Jesus done. Look at the scars that Jesus put. Why not you? Mm -hmm. And then I began to realize that you know he's over everybody. Yeah, and and that's that's literally what we gotta realize. Like we, as as it had already been said, that we we gotta be honest with God. I'm like Lord, because because again, I know we talked, we started out with people and other folks, but what happens when God is the offender? That's like. That's like me when I lost my house. I sit up in the bed one night, crying and hollering. All the houses around me is there, mine is gone. Right, right. And I said, Lord, why did you take my house? And a voice came to me and said, why not? Yeah. So that's God's doing. Mm -hmm. We have to accept what God got in store for us, we will get it. If not, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's good. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I don't even have nothing else to really say to that. Because we, we just, we literally, it goes back to trust. It goes back to trust. And then I guess that'll be the next next week's lesson as we move from forgiveness is to trust. Do we really trust God? Because really, going back to something you said earlier, one reason we seek to hold it and not forgive is because we don't trust God to make it right. Right. I ain't forgiving him. I'm getting him. <laughs> I'm going to bust them. On the spike, on on site. When I see them, I'm getting them. They they getting these hands. When I see them, why? Because I don't trust God and His timing to get to do vengeance. Right, right, right. I don't trust God. So guess what? When the time, you ain't got to worry about it, God. I got it. <laughs> when you forget, mm-hmm. we might as well say no. Right, right. <laughs> but child, if you if the Holy Spirit could go back to me, I, I can talk about me out there because I ain't saying you know what I'm saying? But like the Lord had told me, he said, if I brought you out that one time, I'm going to bring you out again. Right. The point is, like you said, trust him. If we trust, if we truly trust in him, he's going to give us a, a word. Mm-hmm. He going he gonna, he gonna to quicken your spirit, man, because why? If you hear him, he going he gonna to take care of his. Mm-hmm. He going to make sure you good. He going to make sure he, he got you because he said, if I brought you out last time, I don't think I'm gonna bring you out again. But you gonna trust me to bring you out this time. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, Lord. Well, if you gonna trust me, walk like you trust me. Talk like you trust me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lord, we gotta change the way we think, talk, and react to situations. Yeah. yeah. And speaking on that, you know, I was taking some notes, you know, as you were talking, but you know, God can give you a peace. Mm-hmm. Despite how people treat you, you can mm-hmm. still have a peace, like if it don't bother you. So a person can ask you for forgiveness. You forgive them. You see them in a few days. It's like, and they came to you for the forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Still don't know. You know, it's just like, <clears throat> it's almost like the conversation never happened. So once again, I'm free. And that peace, and you brought up behaviors, like the person, the, the repeated behaviors, it's almost like it creates a normalcy or a numbness. Mm-hmm. Because it's just actions, it's like it's numb because it's non-effective. Like she said, you don't react to it. It's mm-hmm. non-reactive. And so, I mean, you have to know it's your mindset. You gonna fall to it. Somebody walk past you and don't see you. It's other things to focus on. Mm-hmm. You know, so you have to realize where you are spiritually. Your your mindset, maturity. You can't fall to every little thing, you know, because this is it's just life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, once you accept that, once you really accept everybody is not gonna like you, you you master it. You master the plan. Yeah. And you can let things go and you can live, but you can still be mm-hmm. around, you know, <coughs> ungodly. Yeah. Because he, believe it or not, I I believe I'm I would say I'm a pretty good pastor. I'm a pretty good person. Amen. But it's yeah. people that walk right by me and won't say uh-huh. two words. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's pastors that will never come to this church because I pastor. Mm-hmm. There you go. That billboard out there, it didn't have my face on it, but I I've been on one before. Yeah. And it wasn't to say welcome to church. Mm-hmm. But I had to make a choice. Whether you come here or not, whether you support or not, whether you speak to me or not, it's for me and not for you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Which, which, like you said, it allows you to live in. It, it, I ain't always been here. Because yeah. I'm Charles Coachman through and through. Mm-hmm. My mama often reminds me. And I got a little bit of her in me too. You know? yeah. I think some of the saints experienced sure that one day when she was on one when she came here. Mm-hmm. And the little girl was crying. She said, I know she crying. She needs to cry. And kept going to the office. Because it's, you know. But anyway. Yeah. But you just got you just I will thank them see mother because the mother's talking like that. But it's when you like as it's been said, when you got peace about it, it's like, okay, you know what? I, I it doesn't even matter. 
Because the Bible reminds us that we are in the world, but what? Not not the world. We're not of it. Right. We're going to have all these different kind of people and spirits and all these different things. Yeah. And Jesus was said what? He was without honor. And I'm closing. Mm -hmm. He was without honor in his own time. Right. His own folks right. couldn't let him be great. Yeah. Oh, that's just little Jesus. That's Mary's son. Do you not realize that he's not normal? But he, he reminds us that even with those, and that's why even on the cross, Mother Jackson is coming with Pastor Zay on. Even on the cross, one of the last things he said, Father, forgive them. They don't even realize that I'm going to be the one that's going to go to hell and preach a revival and give them another opportunity to get saved. They don't even know that one day they're going to have to bow to my name and confess that I'm Lord. So he said, because, as you said, and I said, because they don't even realize, forgive them. They don't even realize that one day they're going to have to ask me for help. Yeah. They don't have to realize that one day that I'm going to be the one that blessed them. And I ain't even going to announce that I blessed them. There's some people I had to get out of some places, and to this day, they don't even know that you offended me five years ago, but I'm the one that got you up out that hole you were in. Right. Uh -huh. I ain't gonna knock on your door and say, oh, it was me that paid your light bill. Mm -hmm. That's where me just comes in. You know that you did good for them, even though they treated you away. But because you forgave, you're able to say, you know what? It don't even matter. My name may never be called, but because I have true love in my heart, I'll do it. Right. Amen. Questions are coming. Come on, mother. Go ahead. Okay, so listening to you tonight, you gave great, great pointers. But how do you get to the point where you want to forgive? You know it's in the Bible to forgive, but it's like you it's like the hurt is in the way. How do you get? How do you move past that? It's a mind change. Yeah, that's that's really what it is. It's it's literally you have to make a decision. Say, you know, I'm gonna change my mind. Right. But then after you change your mind, you have to keep your mind. As I said, it, he'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind, whose mind is stayed on him. You literally, you literally got to let God walk you through. Because you're going to forgive people. We're all going to forgive people in this room. And we're going to, we, <laughs> even in that, they're, they're not going to change. They still may treat us bad. But we got to say, you know what? Because my life depends upon it. As, as Sister Barbara was saying about God, when she had to forgive, you know, how she felt about God, she said it was life or death. Meaning that because my life depends on it, I got to find another way. Okay, so I realize I can't talk to you on the phone or I can't text you because my words are always misunderstood. So I'm going to talk to you when I see you. All right, well, that don't work. I'm going to write a letter and send it to you. That don't work. I'm going to just be, I'm going to do something nice for you. It's literally, we, it, we have to work to find ways to make it work. And that's how we navigate through that. Did I answer your question? We it literally is number one changing our mind, and then number two finding our finding ways to love. There it is. If a person won't forgive, or they won't, they still hold on, whatever. I gotta find ways to love them. That's that's how we navigate through. It's hard because again, sometimes we feel like they don't deserve that, but then we have to look at it and say, I don't deserve God's love, but He loves me anyway. Thank you. 
things I had with me to go with go with them and counsel them. They uh, teaching them about grief. And there there are five stages of grief. So uh, a suggestion that I, I I give to you is if you go and get your third box and all that stuff like that and look that up and see if that's five stages of grief. And just for the Holy Spirit just brought it back. Mm-hmm. I need I need to I need to use that on my Because some stuff will never live again. Mm-hmm. Some stuff in our life that once we forgive it's almost as us putting it to death. Mm-hmm. Marriage, a relationship, the the church membership that we let go. Friendships. Yeah. Situationships. Mm-hmm. There's a person now that I'm trying to help counsel through letting go of a relationship. Because they've acknowledged the Lord told them to let it go. That is not good for them. But it's almost like a death. It's almost like a death. And so sometimes things when we're and that's one reason why, again, sometimes come on, mother and pray. <laughs> If you got to hear it and help me, I'm trying my best because I know forgiveness, we can stay on there a while. But um, sometimes we won't forgive because it leaves the door open, like I said earlier. And so God, sometimes we have to, people have to help us. All right, did, now did you did you go to them today? Tell somebody, hey, I'm, I'm going to such and such today to do this. But hold me accountable, make sure I go to them. And follow up. Did you go to such and such and ask for forgiveness like you said you would? Did you go have that conversation like you said you would? <laughs> because sometimes we'll bail out. I don't know why I'm saying that, but the Lord just told me to tell you. Mm-hmm. Use somebody as your accountability partner and let them know. Even if it's tonight when you get home, call somebody and say, hey, I'm, I need to handle this. Make sure. Check with me tomorrow or, you know, whatever. I don't want to take the drag it out because, again, life ain't promised. But I need to go to somebody, hold me accountable, and make sure I reach out to that person by such and such. I have a question also. Yes. Maybe I don't have nothing against you, but maybe I just don't have no words for you. Am I wrong for just being quiet and silent and don't say nothing at all? Um, does that include speaking and being mm-hmm. cordial? Mm-hmm. Meaning like, are you able to be cordial? No, well that's the reconciliation part. Once you forgive, there has to be reconciliation, meaning I got to be able to say, God bless you, or hey, how you doing? And actually mean it. Right. Because if I can't do that, I ain't, I ain't let it go. I'm still holding on. If I see that ex wife, ex husband, ex somebody, and I, I be wanting to knock you or, you know, get away from me, I ain't let it go. Is it hard? It's hard. But that's why we got to have the help of the Lord to say, Lord, here's my struggle. Right. Here's where I am. Yeah, here's where I am. I ain't going to fake it and say I done made it. And a part of your deliverance just happened because you were able to say you ain't there. So now that now that you acknowledge the wisdom part of it is, Lord, help me to be able to let go. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand a big, a big part of it because the enemy will swear us to secrecy and not say it out of our mouth. That's why I made you say it. Because as long as I hold it in, he can hold me to it. But we all heard you say that you ain't there to that reconciliation part yet. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to help you get there. Because the Bible says, bear you one another's burdens. The strong bear the infirmity of the weak. You may not be there, but I've been there before. But somebody had to help me get to where I am. And that goes for all of you. That's right. You ain't always, as his brother said, it wasn't that he got there on his own. Somebody prayed for him mm-hmm. and helped him to let, sister right here, 20 years, she was by herself over here, isolated. But she came to me and said, I, I, I just, it was literally, I'm closing, I, but I feel deliverance in this house. We'll, I'll give you back 10 minutes next week. But it was at the old location, and she sat on the front row. Do you remember? On the front row and got deliverance that night. Because she was able to admit, I'm mad with God. 
and we was talking about forgiveness. The people sitting around her didn't even realize she dealt with kids but didn't really care for kids that much because it reminded her what God wouldn't do for her. But she got free because she was able to speak it that night. She cried, but she spoke it. Yeah. I'm going to help you get there. Pray, Mama. I told you to pray early. Pray, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. If you want to do uh, cash app to the church, still fill out an envelope and give it to her and just write on there that you gave cash app and the office gives it to her. And um, thank you for explaining that. And just as she said that the pastor's aid is, it, it literally aids me whenever I have to go to hospitals or if I have to, you know, go to different things or stay out of town or if there's a need that sometimes the people may come to me and ask for, whether it's assistance with whatever, and the Lord leads me to help um, instead of asking out my own pocket or going out of my own pocket, I'll sometimes reach into the pastor's aid to help. So it literally pours back out. So that's what is, uh, it doesn't pay my bills. It just helps me assist whenever there's a need that arises mm -hmm. and the Lord prompts me to help those around, right. okay? Amen. Or if I have to travel or whatever to visit sick, death in the families, whatever the case may be, it just assists me in that area. All right. Um, Announcements. This week announcements. Just remember fourth Sunday is this coming Sunday, supersede Sunday. Um, if you would like to participate in that, that's twenty dollars a month. Twenty dollars on fourth Sundays. Um and though there'll be envelopes on the back table on Sunday that you'll be able to give in. It's called the Love Off Special Offering, Love Off, whatever the name of the envelope, with little grapes on it. Special offering. Um, you can give it at that. That'll be that's every fourth Sunday, um, and that assists and aids um, the upbuilding of the community. And don't forget the women's department is uh, set in place at the church. Mm -hmm. Right, women's department selling plates Sunday after church. The price is ten. Baked chicken, rye, green beans, green beans cake, roll, cake, roll, soda. soda. Um, so patronize them, please, if, if you haven't already cooked your dinner, which I would assume you probably haven't. But um, just save that money that you were going to spend on that and uh, patronize them on Sunday after service. Also, if you would like to um, let them know in advance that you'll be buying a plate or two or three or four, you can see any other ladies and let them know, um, and they'll just kind of have a, a head count, even though they'll have extras. All right. All um, right. Also, starting Sunday, we are igniting um, or initiating a um, corn drive here, and it will be um, off of teams. Um, if you look on the back table back there, there have been a um, jar set up for it um, for teams. If there is a team back there that you, there are a lot of people that uh, support that's not on that back table, let me know, and we'll get a jar. Um, for that. Now, if it's just one person that go for that team, uh, you know, we'll consider. But um, you can drop your coins off um, back there. And again, it's just a, a fundraising idea. It is a, a coin drive for your favorite team. And then um, once we fill those up, we'll dump them into the pots for that team and then, you know, fill it back up. And on our college Sunday, we will announce uh, the winner, um, the team. Right. <laughs> go Gator! The team that wins. Go uh, Gator! I actually have probably about a half of a, um, a half of a um, jar already full that I'm just waiting to pour in there um, for that team with the red and white on there, the crimson and white. So, um, but still, I'm getting it. All right, but um, I think that's all the announcements that I have. If we can stand.
just a reminder, ministry training class is tomorrow at 6 p.m. So those that are part of that class, if you can and will, uh, meet me back here tomorrow at 6 p.m. Let's fellowship with one another. Reach out to one another. It's a church directory on the back table. Um, I think we may have to make some changes to it because we've had some new people to join since that one was made. But if you would just take one and we'll update it and get the new one out on Sunday. Um, reach out to someone and let them know that you know you enjoy being a part of the ministry and that you just check it to see how they were doing. Amen. Invite somebody to church on Sunday. Amen. I believe that the Lord is going to bless us. I owe y'all for two Sundays. Amen. So I believe that, that don't mean service is going to be longer. Um, but I do believe that God's going to move in our midst. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, I, I feel a stirring. Um, and anytime messages or lessons come like this, it's because the Lord is getting ready to do great things Amen. in our lives. It, it just it is um Amen. he's been speaking this week about where we're headed and so i'm, I'm just excited i'm just excited yeah. all right i'm gonna do something different tonight grab grab somebody hand around you grab both of them grab find one person and grab both their hands find one person and grab both of their hands <laughs> Grab one person. Find one person and grab both of their hands. Oh, I got to understand. And tonight, as we're preparing to leave, um, and for those that are transitioning to choir rehearsal, uh, begin to just uh, pray quickly for the person hand that you're holding. Oh, yeah. um, just begin to intercede for them and pray for them. You don't know what they're carrying or what they have carried and what they're going through. Just begin to pray. As I pray, begin to pray for them and then we believe that God's going to answer. He said, any, any two of us shall touch and agree anything. He'll be in the midst of us and he'll answer us. And so, Father, tonight we thank you. We thank you for the word that have come forth. We thank you for what we've experienced tonight. We thank you for the charge that you've given us. You reminded us that, God, if we forgive, you forgive us. And that, God, we thank you tonight that you are doing what it is that we need you to do in us. God, we ask, as David asked, that we desire to know truth in our inward parts and in our hidden parts. Help us to know wisdom. God, we love you and we praise you tonight. And, God, we pray that you will bless us in the name of Jesus. From the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, God, we thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love and kindness that's been around us. And God, we ask that as we leave this place, but never your presence, that you will bless us. Give us what we need tonight in the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you for what you're getting ready to do for us. And God, as we return back to this place on Sunday, we ask that you would give us a hot time in you. Let yokes be destroyed. Let burdens be lifted. Let your anointing come in the name of Jesus. God, we love you, and we praise you for what you're getting ready to do in our midst. We love you. We thank you for the miracles that will take place this week. We thank you that you're yet working things out for our finances, for our jobs, for our families, for our homes. In the name of Jesus, we love you, and we give you praise and glory. Bless the choir rehearsal that shall follow. In the name of Jesus, anoint each vessel that they may be instruments for your use. We love you and we praise you. Bind the hand of the enemy that will come to destroy us on our way homes. We ask you that you will put your arms of protection around our cars. Cover us under your blood. In the name of Jesus, that there be no accidents, no incidents, no untimely death. God bless Pastor Terrence Bolger family, God, as they grieve his loss tonight. God, as we funeralize him on Saturday, we ask that you will cover them under your blood. Let them know that you are near him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Go in peace. Amen. Choir, uh, choir, we can assemble real quickly. Fellowship with one another as you go. What's up, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Shala and Frank. Come on over and check out our channel, Promo SDK Reality TV, husband and wife, where we eat good in the neighborhood. We're a mukbang eating show, cooking and recipes, especially soul food, pranks on Frank. Oh, y'all go check it out challenges, vlogs, comedy skits, 
short videos, and TikTok. So come on and become our oh yeah baby today. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram, promo SDK, promo SDK. Or you can also go to any of our social sites and find us under promo STK. Oh yeah, baby. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to meet you. So come on over.